Hey guys, Jonathan here with TLD with the performance results of the 2012 13-inch 2.5GHz MacBook Pro. This is the baseline 1199 model, just like you get it from Apple, no upgrades whatsoever. And due to the fact that it has a 5400RPM hard drive, it's going to boot up a little slower compared to a MacBook Air or the Retina MacBook Pro, for example. But if you guys want to see a video on how to upgrade it to an SSD, it's actually pretty easy. So let me know by hitting that like button, and I'll put that video together for you guys. So we're going to wrap it up. I think it boots up just under 30 seconds, and there we go. So it's not horrible, but it's definitely not the fastest. So next, we're going to hop on to disk speed test to see how fast the hard drive operates at. And you can see it's not amazing results. We're getting nearly 70 megabytes a second. If that was bumped up to a 7200 RPM hard drive, you'd probably get around 100 to 110 megabytes a second. And if you bump that up to an SSD, we're probably talking around 3 to 400 to even 500 megabytes a second. So again, if you guys want to see that video, let me know and we'll make it happen, Captain. Next up, we are hopping on to Geekbench, and this is the 64-bit version. What this does is test the entire system's performance, and we're able to obtain a score of 7,482, which is not bad by any means. For the next test, we are using Novabench, which isn't as accurate as Geekbench, but it is free in the Mac App Store. So if you guys want to download this yourself, let me know your results compared to mine. Shoot me a comment down below. And for this system, we got a score of 596. But if you look towards the bottom, you can see the write speed is kind of slow. So I bet you if we upgrade this to an SSD, those scores will improve as well. For the next set of tests, we are using Cinebench 11.5, which not only tests the CPU, but the GPU as well. So we're testing out the Intel HD 4000 graphics, and we got a score of nearly 19 frames per second, which isn't too bad for integrated graphics. For the CPU, we got a score of 2.90, and below that, you can see there are two cores, four threads. What that means is there are two physical cores on the CPU, but the Mac OS will actually see and utilize it as a virtual quad-core machine, which is actually pretty cool. Next up, we got Final Cut Pro 10, and what I did was use the exact same project as I did for the Retina MacBook Pro test. If you guys missed that video, I have it as a video response down below. So it is a 30-second 1080p clip exported to H.264, and it exported it in just under 56 seconds, and I believe the Retina MacBook Pro did the exact same task in 29 seconds. Now, for those of you guys who saw the Retina performance video, I closed the video out with an SSD stress test where I opened up every single application on the computer. That one handled it no problem. This one, not so much. And again, that is due to the slower 5400 RPM hard drive. So like I talked about at the beginning of this video, if you guys would like to see an upgrade video on this machine, upgrading the RAM as well as an SSD, let me know by hitting that like button and I will make that video happen for you guys. So as always, thank you guys for watching. If you guys are brand new to the channel and you're watching for the first time, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any more coverage. I got a conveniently placed annotation right here. Go ahead and click that. And aside from that, I will see you guys later.